What you doing? I'm going to model a shopping cart today. Okay. Well, that's a very high-tech way of getting rid of a box, or high horsepower way of getting rid of the box. Uh, hello, anybody. I'm Belinda Pretender, and today I have a modeling session in which I plan to model uh, a shopping cart. And so I have some references that I just quickly got offline. I could not find any that would be flat or horizontal or top view, just to import into Blender. So I'm going to be winging it using the reference images that you see here that are pretty much a perspective and um, modeling it uh, in, in the, uh, and then just trying to you know, translate that to a model in 3D. And uh, so today is, today is July 25th, 2020. It's about, it's 106 right now. So I plan to uh, maybe dedicate a, a couple hours at most to this thing. So it's a lot of work, so let's get to it. Um, first, I'm trying to show a couple things. Okay, there, a couple things to show there. And uh, let me get, these things are on. There you go. All right, so I think everything's ready to go. So um, file open. Don't save this. And I did save these. This is a standard startup file from Blender. I just save it already in my directory, set everything up so I don't take time to do so in the video. I'm gonna take the camera and the light and move them to, again, move them to a new collection. Collection number two is fine. And then by hitting one on the keyboard, I can hide hide that. Now, um, if I go and look at the reference images there, um, the shopping cart that I chose was more of like an old time, not old time, but like once, you know, the, the very standard shopping cart design that's been around for many, many years that I can remember. And it basically consists of some tubes that make up the frame and then the cage itself that makes up the basket. So basically I'll be modeling, modeling tubes and m and uh, uh, the uh, basket there, the, uh, the tubes for, uh, for the basket. Um, so I have a couple of images here. This one's pretty much on the side as well. Some of them are chrome colored, some of them are painted, but uh, they also have this bracket on the side. And the challenge here, of course, is just to try to get the shape down right with the tubes and then try to get the basket shapes correct and then turn those into the wire that you see that makes up the basket. And it gets really busy visually. So I can see that where this to me is, uh, I've already done other baskets. It gets a little, um, you just want to get it to look busy and look right. But to look perfect as, as what is shown here, well, maybe I'm not going to try to achieve that altogether, but we'll see what I can get. So for now, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna tackle is the tubes, and the tubes have a very specific shape, as can be seen over here. Is that um, the tubes come down like this and does like a zigzag right here, and then there's the other portion of the tube that does this like this right here. So I don't have, and then obviously they come around, they bend around on themselves. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go ahead and start with those first. Let me make sure that my screen is showing here. And um, no, I'm not sure if I actually showed the screen. So if I didn't, though, that that annotation tool here is showing the tubes that I'm talking about. Okay, so here I have the box. The box itself is not really going to, um, to um, and I'm gonna wing it right now. I'm just gonna just wing it and make it work. The box itself, uh, number one, let me rename it and just call it tubes or tubing and then take that one vertex and then that one right there on the side view. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate and put it somewhere over here. Control invert X and V. Uh, delete those right there. And I can always scale this down. So right now I'm going to just eyeball it and try to get it to where I need. I think I need. So back looking at my reference is probably going to extrude something like this. This is the handle. Extrude something like that. This is where it comes down to the basket. Extrude in the X or the Y rather. Something like this for the zigzag. And then extrude down again about this distance right here. 
around in that angle right there and then extrude again in the Y, some distance like that. If I were to take that same one there and I'm going to duplicate it, I'm going to duplicate it just eyeballing it right around there, maybe, and then extrude that one down like that. Okay, and then extrude along the Y, somewhere along like that. And now here I'm just proportionally trying to get it to the point where I think it's going to have that cross-sectional shape of the tubing that makes up that, that, um, that makes up the, um, yeah, I think that works. That makes up the uh, cross-section of the uh, tubing for the cart. So what I'm looking at right now is I was talking and, and then looking at this. Let me make this bigger so we can see better. Um, what I was looking at is that it needs a shape. It actually has to have, not a shape, an angle. It has to have a slant that goes off like that. And uh, for that, I'm going to bring this little manipulator tool up here. And uh, what I'm going to do is, I think what I'm going to do, I think, is to simplify things for myself, is put a vertex there, extrude it in the angle that I think it's going to go, right there, and it may work, it may not, and I'll fix it if it doesn't fix, it doesn't work. So then take both of those, extrude them in the Z, and so I have a plane, so control link to select everything, and then over here, I'm going to call it shop. I'm going to create myself a new transform orientation. I'm going to call it um, cart side, maybe just the cart side. All right, X face. I don't really need it. What I needed was the transform orientation. So I'm going to select everything A. And then I'm going to put the cursor right around there. I don't want it to get too fat because I'm going to mirror this too. So I'm going to put the cursor right around there and make sure that off of the 3D cursor, I'm going to scale in the Z. And that's already telling me that it's in the Z uh, for that cart side transform orientation. Zero. Enter. So it gives me the angle. It basically projected them. It's like a projection somewhat. Not really a projection, but basically I just scaled them because there's a warping that's happening. So if I look at it on the side, it didn't change drastically from what I did previously. So I think I've got, I'm, I'm good. Now I'm going to take this vertex right here and that vertex right there. And then I'm going to extrude them in the X. Uh, wrong X. I'm going to hit another X just so I can get the X. The, there you go. Right there. About right there. Tab out and then add a modifier here. Add the mirror modifier. Okay. Mm. So I think they come together like that. Let me tab in there, grab this one. On the modifier itself, I want to make sure that it has the clipping right there. All right. And then grab this one in the X, or another X. The reason I have to push X twice is because I have that card side, but I'm going to go back to global real quick here. And so that brings them together, gives me that shape right there. And then that one as well, grab X, bring that one together. And um, I am wondering right now whether I have, whether this one comes back in here. Meaning whether that vertex comes across and meets over here. So, I can browse my photos. I don't see it. It doesn't look like it does. No, oh no, it does. It This one, this particular one over here that I'm looking at right here, it almost appears as if this one, let me see, in my drawing, as if the tubing comes around like that. So it's right under the basket. Hmm. It might be there as well. That's for this one. What about the design on this one?
Yeah, so this one doesn't have it. Um, I see a shadow there. Looks like it might have it. So I don't have to, basically, I'm not stuck to doing that. So what I can do is I can guess at it. In order for this to work the way that it's shown there, this is going to be my cart, okay? So in the front view, I'm going to grab it and put it right over there that vertex and so I'm going to go back into the snapping tools here and then make it active rotate and scale project onto itself is fine so then I can snap and then just grab Z and that puts it right right parallel or not right at the same plane as that one and then here I'm going to extrude it this is the top view without the snapping I'm going to extrude it something like this And then grab, um, let's say right around here, and then grab Z with the snapping right onto that. That's interesting. It doesn't look like it snapped. Oh yeah, and the Z, I went a little past, that's fine. So this is going to be my cart. It's going to give it that extra zigzagging extrude and the X all the way over here. So there's two tubes. There's this one and then there's this one. Which go across. Okay, there's a control save. Uh, tab out. That looks better. All right, I'm going to duplicate it and move it to a new collection and it's going to be the third collection, which is fine. It's going to be the junk collection. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to start doing some destructive stuff to this, meaning taking that and that, and then going, um, I think it's Shift Alt B. No, it's, or is it Control Shift B? There, Control Shift B. It gives me a bevel, and I can choose how many I want. I want that many. Tab out, and then hit one. <laughs> I did it on the on the one that I copied. Um, on the tubing that, no, so what it is is I moved, that's tubing 01, there, tubing 02, it was, is not a whole lot of work, yeah, maybe it is, so let me go back into my third collection, second, third collection, delete that, the first collection, take that one, duplicate it, move it to collection 3, back in collection one I'm gonna do redo that and come in a little like this and I thought I had I do have that on yeah that doesn't work I'm ready to go and download the other one that does this all right um, And then maybe do that. the same for this, about this much right here. That kind of works. So basically I'm beveling those in a curve. Now, I'm gonna take those two, repeat the process there. And then the last one, take it and repeat the process like that. Well, no, let me look at in the side view, in the orthographic. And this one, I'm gonna give it more. Right around there. And this one, too many vertices, but just go around like that. All right, so this constitutes the tubing for that cart. Control, save. And now what I can do is I'm going to duplicate this one and move it to collection three. And then for this one here, 
I'm going to, there's a convert function. It used to be, um, it used to be a button you can pick, but not anymore, convert to. I may have it in the quick menus or not. Curve, I converted it to a curve. So if I go over here, the tab changes. Here's the tab, changes now. It's a 3D curve and it's full. And so I need to go down and find the, um, I think it's under geometry here, and then the bevel here. There starts to extrude into the tubing. So the reason I copied the one, this earlier is because the tubing, just proportionally speaking, the tubing needs to be um, thicker than what I see right there, or rather thicker than the tolerance that I give myself here. So I can see if I can fix this, you know, right now by just, where am I? Which one was it? It was this one. A little bit more. Some of them are gonna clip a little bit. If they clip a little bit, I can fix that. All right, that looks good. And then I'll go W, Shade Smooth. So this is good. Looking good right there. Oh, I forgot to bevel this one. So there's a problem right there. So I'm going to delete it and go back into my third collection. Find the one that's beveled. Duplicate it and then move it over to collection one. Collection one, I have it here again. It just still hasn't been converted over to a curve. Before I do that though, I'm going to select these two and then the top view with a proportional editing on and I want connected only. I'm going to grab them in the X. I'm just going to move that circle there. I'm losing some of this here, so I'm just going to grab them all like this. A little bit more. I just give myself more room for, because I already know from the previous um, iteration that it, they were a little too close. Oh, I can see right here it's a little, I can fix that. It's a little bit of an eyeball too, so sometimes it's not perfect, but uh, the best way to fix this, Control Z. I'm gonna go ahead and move it and then just move the circle more. All right. What I had forgotten that I didn't know is that I didn't bevel this one. It's kind of sharp too, as this one is over here, but I'm gonna leave it with that many. All right, tab out. And again, do I have a quick favorites? Convert, there you go. Mesh from curb or curve from mesh. And I've got it over here. So over here in the bevel depth, go and start doing the bevel depth. W, Shade Smooth. And then maybe zoom in here a little bit and see where they start to clip. All right. That works fine. That looks fine. I'm gonna save my progress right there deselect it so I can see it. And now I'm going to compare it. You don't see this. I'm seeing it on my other screen. But I'm going to compare it to see if visually it gets... It has the, the, the boldness of the cart. And I'm going to say, personally, I think I need to go a little thicker. But I'm not going to redo the steps that I just did. I'm just going to select it and then go a little bit more. Just to where I think... It meets it, and then I'll just fix it um, on my own. Not on my own. I'll fix it right now, right here. Okay, a couple of things to fix. So what I'm going to do, so now I'm in the curve. It's basically a curve that I have to work with, and it's basically those right there. Hit the proportional edit. Make sure it's on, on the side view here, three on the side view. Just grab it up a little bit. Oh, did I lose the mirror modifier? I think I lost the mirror modifier when 
um, I did when I did the conversion. So it may have, hmm, I wonder if I had applied it in the other ones. Tab out, I'm gonna go check. So they still have them, at least in the conversion, you know, it applied the mirror, mirror modifier, and now I don't have it, but I'll get it back. Okay, this looks a little, it looks a little too thick, but I'm gonna leave it like that because visually then it, actually you can see it. I think, maybe not. All day. All right, maybe maybe I'm gonna leave it at point one. Nope, point one two. Not 1.2, point one two. Come on. Point one two. There. So that it doesn't get lost. Okay, back in here. If I go into the edit mode, I'm just going to grab those until they clip or they ba barely touch. That's good. Now I'm going to grab these. And here I'm going to move them. Oh, proportional editing doesn't seem to work or there seems to be a disconnect. No, there isn't. I wonder why it looks like there's a disconnect. There totally does seem to be a disconnect between these two. And I think what it is, is that's the point where it's toggling. So if I go W, see if I can toggle the cyclic, cyclic here. Mm. That's where it disconnects. Toggle cyclic. Not the ideal point, but I'm going to not worry about it. I'm just going to select both points when I move them then. All right. Here, I'm just going to move it until it doesn't clip. And that's good. Now I'm going to take that one. Take these. Side. I'm just going to eyeball this and bring the ball down. Let me put the cursor there so I can see the size, or rather better yet, go period medium point and then grab. See the size of the influence ball there, influence sphere, and just move it out a little bit. there I seem to have moved it without this one control Z no I moved it that's good all right and then here I'll fix that. I'm going back to the edit mode. That's what I'm doing here. So control save, tab out, and then W, uh, or rather go to my quick favorites and do the mesh convert. Mm, uh, rather, first, I already know it's 0 0.12, but here go quick favorites, mesh. So now it's all vertices again. So I can just grab this one and round it out a little bit more. A little bit like that. That's fine. Tubes don't bend perfectly, so it's not the end of the world. And then select these over here. XV, select that one again. All right. Because I made all my changes here that I want them to apply over here again. So all I have to do is go to the modifier, add another mirror modifier. Where is it? I always go, got to look for it. Beep, look for it right there. Since I know it's going to apply it, I've already applied it right there. And then convert it again to uh, Q. Yeah, it should be a curve now. There's a curve. 
and in the geometry, in the bevel, be 0.12. There it is, W shade smooth. And um, the resolution is fine, I think it's four. So it gives me plenty of faces going around like this. All right, control save. Uh, now I'm going to control save, um, duplicate it and move it to the third collection. So now that tubing is going to be in this shape. I'm going to apply it um, to the, turn it into, rather turn it into a mesh, as you can see there. Now I've got a mesh surface and I'm going to go ahead and cut some loops in here. But why, you ask? Because I'm going to apply, or not apply, but I'm going to add to this a subdivision. Control R. I could have done this also either in the edit mode before I turn it into a tube or whatever the... Actually, if I'd done it before I turned it into a tube, it could have helped a little bit. Uh, with the way that this tube actually changes. It gets flatter and, and so on um, when when the computer is trying to understand which direction, you know, uh, to go as it comes off the bend. And then control R. There. Control R here. And then control R here, about two right there, it's fine. Put way too many on the other side. I can always come and, what, hey, what? how come I end up with two? <clears throat> I don't know why I ended up with two right there. doesn't matter. I'm gonna do the mirror modifier again. All day into the wireframe, select these. X vertices. Here's another one. X vertices. And then modifier, add another mirror. Yeah, something's going on here. XV. Oh, okay. It overshot it. That's what it was. Control Z. So Alt A, C, X, V. And then select these, bring them over here, make sure the clipping is on. Control Z. The proportional editing move these out. That's why I undid that. Tab out. So here's a solid view here. And now, Control Save, I'm gonna go Control 2. And now it looks nice and smooth the tube does, I mean. Control is nice and smooth. If I were to then go into the shading tab, it's taking a while here, but if I were to go into the shading tab and then just give it a new material and then just make it metallic and start seeing what it's going to look like, and that's because the roughness is not all the way down. Boom. Okay, so there, it starts looking like a tube. Steel tube, the chrome steel tubes that carry that Control save. Take that and close it in by doing a face and then control B, a little bevel, but only two. Maybe one more. Tab out. I think that's the other one. The other one, the other two close in on themselves, so that's the other one. The only uh, only one that I needed to do that to. So there's a tube. All right, good. I've got that so far. It already looks like a, you know, piece of steel now. If I go back to the layout, where do I go from this? Let's put some wheels on it real quick. The wheels are the ones. It's already half an hour in here, and I'm gonna try to make it as quick as I can. I'm going to add some wheels to this. Mm, 
the easiest way to make a wheel. You know, we have add-ons for making bolts and stuff. I wonder if there's an add-on for making just wheels. Just here's a wheel. Shift add uh, mesh, and I'm going to add a um, cylinder. Mm. And then I can always go in here, which is fine. But I just, yeah, I don't want that many. I think I only want eight there. And then tab in, front view, rotate it 90, and then start scaling down to where I need it, right around there, on the front view there, grab it. I'm just eyeballing it. Scale X. I went off the center here, but I'll fix it in a, min in a minute. Actually, here's what I should do. Shift center the cursor. Um, yeah, that's fine. Center the cursor, and then I'll do. I'll just use the mirror modifier as I'm working with this. Um, tab out W origin to 3D cursor. Take this one and add the mirror modifier. So there's the wheel, and I only work on one. Um, I'm gonna work on, <laughs> I'm gonna do all four of them. In the mirror modifier, I can also do the Y. I'm just gonna put them over here. I'll just move them over when I need to. That's fine. Because Or otherwise change the, you know, I just change the center of this. But it doesn't make any sense because these are f wider apart. On the side view here, um, And go to the faces, select both faces, that one and this one. Again, in the side view, I'm going to inset them a little bit. I'm trying to get an idea for the proportions for how much, and I think maybe I'll select everything then. Make sure that right now I am off the medium point, and then maybe scale a little bit more. A little bit more. That's fine. Because when I do the, mo the uh, subdivision modifier, it's going to make it smaller too. So maybe grab it down here. Okay, so I have the two faces there now. Now I'm going to extrude them, scale them in the X, in there a little bit. And then... Hmm, maybe I should have gone with the 16. I'm looking right now at the reference and I see that it has more. <laughs> it has more um, um, uh, what do you call them? Ridges? Uh, more of the wheel has more spokes. So if I were to add spokes in here let me go. Oh, wrong one. Seven. So if I were to add spokes, that's one. So basically, this wheel is going to have four spokes. Let's just call it. Call it like that. All right. Inset again to about there. Take these. Wrong one. I'm going to go into the solid. Um, well, no. I'm going to go back in here into the wireframe, deselect, and use the circle select. Select the ones that I want all the way through, and then extrude them, and then scale X. Bring them in. All right. Tab out. Control 2. See how that looks. W. Shade smooth. Then select this edge, select edges, and then by face angles. I'm going to have to see how it looks like this.
All right. I'm gonna select that one there too. I'm looking for the angles that I'm going to bevel. The same way that I did other modeling. I'm just gonna select, you know, I used to select similar to select these edges, but I want right now I just want these also added. And I'm gonna bevel those, but for, for now I'm gonna go Shift E and just crease them so I can see what it's gonna look like. And I can see, yeah, suppose that works. Uh, I should have probably beveled it before or inset a couple of rings beforehand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select in the faces, go back into the side view here, and then in the wireframe with the face selection, Alt A, deselect everything. I'm going to select the two faces that are going in like that, and then just go Control Plus there back to that X faces in the edge selection select that one again and that one okay I think that works so extrude scale shift X in just a tiny bit extrude scale X in and it's, right now it's creasing every edge. Let me go ahead and make sure that the crease is all the way to zero so that I don't, I don't get all the other edges creased. Extrude, scale, shift X, tiny one right there. Extrude, scale, shift X, all the way to the center. And then extrude, extrude, scale, shift X, another one. All right, maybe I went a little too much. Control plus, 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 scale X, a little bit out. And there, control minus, or rather take that loop, fill it in and take that loop and fill it in. All right, in the face selection, in the side view, with the circle select, select these now. Mm, no. Select that edge and that edge back there, and then just scale Shift X. So what it is, is that, beep, I want to see it right there, very close. So what it is, is that I really should just then just cut another loop in here, and another one in here. I know it's hard to see, but basically I'm cutting some loops because it was pulling this one too, too tight, tightly in there. Okay, so again, with the face selection on the side, I can do that, 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 and that. Oh, on the side again. I forgot to do it with the X-ray on. Extrude them, scale them, and the X. See how that looks? Looking better, okay. There it is. So that gives me more or less the look that I was looking for, which is the the depressions of the, or just the indications that there's a depression there in the plastic that makes up the wheel spoke. Okay, so that's good. I think I'm going to leave these two the way they are. This one, I'm going to select this loop. No, I'm going to go into the edge selection, select these two loops. And these two over here as well. Select them. And, um, well, I close what I needed. Bring down the crease. I didn't select them with the alt or what. 
with a shift, I mean. There. Bring them down with a crease. That actually looks all right. So the only ones that I really need to the need to bevel now is these. Bring down the crease and then just control B to get rid of the one loop. So that the wheels are usually nice and round. Tab out there. That's looking like a wheel. Tab in and select those. Go to the vertex selection so I have those right there. I am still in the medium point, so I'm going to scale Shift X. Just making the wheel a little bit bigger. Control plus, scale Shift X a little bit more. Now selecting that one, I'm going to turn this off for a second. And then scale shift X, scale shift X without the snaps there. And then control B a little bit. And then just select the outer ones. Select those two and then scale X. All the way there and then scale shift X. Scale it down like that. Turn it back on. Just to give that little ridge, a little plastic ridge that actually holds the plastic from the rubber from the plastic, I mean. And I'm going to take these two here and then scale X. There. That will render fine at a distance like this, let's say. So let's go to the top view. They're in fine location there. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Alt A, A, select everything. Since I'm only working on one, just move it over. Maybe here. And they probably have to be back here a little bit because the bracket that holds it uh, have a curve to them. All right. Control save and then apply. I need to be in the object mode and apply it. Now, and select the wheels, tab out, out. So I'm going to hit link. I'm going to make sure that I have the X, little check thing here for the, for the um, edit mode mirroring options there. And then move it to where I think I need it down here somewhere and then the top over here somewhere I think there control save F2 I'm gonna call it wheels control save they look a little fat but that's fine this is an old cart this is from the 1970s All right, control save. Let's see what where, where am I in time? Forty four minutes. Let's see how much more I can do in fifteen minutes. So I would take that one. So right now both objects have their origin at the zero zero. Um, I need to have a starting point. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna do. Excuse me. What I'm gonna do is use this front wheel as a starting point as well, just to make the bracket that actually holds the wheel and I'm going to duplicate it I have to rename it it's not gonna be wheels it's gonna be um <laughs> what do you call the wheel holders well wheels two works shields <laughs> wheels to enter all right tab in there go to the face selection that one and that one uh, control invert everything x faces so basically i just have so select all the faces then 
scale X. Come on up. Tab in there. Make sure that this is off while I'm working on here. In the vertex selection, now what I need to do is just start extruding what is going to be the shape of the shape of the um, one, two, three. Mm, I'm not sure which way. I'm going to go from here. So I'm going to go the shape of the bracket that holds it. I'm just going to extrude it like that and then scale it up. Hold A, C. Well, grab. Straighten this one out a little bit. All right. Oh, because of the scaling and they went out really far out there, but that's fine. I'll just select these here and then go scale X, bring them back in. Actually, they need to have this kind of shape to leave room for the wheel, right? They need to have that kind of shape there to have room for the wheel. Right now, I'm just going to take those two and join them. Join. Do the same over here. Join. And then join. Control R. Two loops. Control R. This I could be mirroring it. Two loops. Control Z, Control R, two loops. Yeah, that looks like it works. I'm gonna go. So right now, I think maybe what I'll do is go into the scope mode. And in the scope mode, I'll go to the brush Oop, I lost my preset in the brush, so I don't have it. I would have to create it. I don't know why I lost my preset. Why am I? Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that one. So grab all one. And in the, um, is in the fall off, I'm going to project it. So basically I just want, I want the same grab brush, but I don't want it to be limiting itself to the, the view occlusion, I guess. I, I have no, <laughs> I'm just gonna move these like this. I probably should not have cut the loops prematurely or I cut the loops prematurely probably. But I could fix that. Do I want it like that? I'm looking at the reference too. So maybe I want a bit of a curvature down here like this. Like this. It's hard to see, I know. Um, I think it'll project even if I... Let's see what happens. If I come all the way over here. Yeah, I projected all the way through. So I go back over here. I come back over here. And then I can do Q wireframe so I can see what I'm doing or show better what I'm doing okay I think that works better right there that's gonna be flat this is gonna come down a little bit like this I think so I think that works Go back into the object mode, or rather go into the edit mode. Take that one and that one, and then go Control E, bridge the edge loops up here. Now, go into the edge selection by hitting the two edge selections. Hit those two right there, and then Control B. with a control R right there with a control B up to there tab out 
And let's see how this looks. Maybe this is a little high here. All right. I think I turned off the modifier, that's why. I just haven't gotten used to using, you know, that. So there's there's the the stuff that holds it. Now I'm gonna solidify it out to the outside. And then I need a wheel up here that is or like a something that appears to be oh wait, I have I see something. Three. Three here. Tab. Well, um, control zero, tab in. I'm gonna make sure that these faces are all planar. So for that, I'm gonna hit the local mode because that bar is getting in the way. Three, and select those up there. And then making sure that I'm off the medium point scale, Z, zero. They're planar now. Now, the other thing is in proportional editing, I'm gonna grab them. Moving forward a little bit more. It has to be eccentric. That's what that's what has to happen. I think um, the the um, place where it pivots has to be eccentric from the place where the wheel actually holds. That's why I'm moving these more. So that way, when you push it forward, the wheel swings to the back until it gets broken, right? And then becomes a, a nuisance just to push it down the down the aisle. It's that one wheel that just keeps flopping back and forth, blah, 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 making noise. <laughs> All right, so it needs to be a little bit more. Okay, so back into the edit mode there. Just grab it and move it over. Tab, control two. There, I think that's good enough for something that's going to be just for visual. Just for visual clutter. <laughs> really is what it is. This is all visual clutter is what I'm doing this cart for. Control save. Um, yeah, that's good. All right, up, add a modifier, solidify. Now I want to make sure that it's going, and it's based on the normal, so it looks like it's going in right now. There, now that's going out. Now that pushes out a little bit, tiny bit. Okay, tab out. Now, right in the middle of that face, tab right in the middle of that face right there. I don't have it selected. Why don't I see it? Because I don't have, the, the solidify is, which one is the solidify? This one, I'm gonna shove it back above, above the uh, subdivision. There's my face. Okay. Cursor to that face. Uh, a cylinder <laughs> P selection tab out since I added it as part of that it came in with the subdivision and the solidify so I'm gonna re get rid of the uh, solidify to keep the subdivision because I will use it um, shade smooth tab in there select everything scale down I'm going to turn off the proportional editing for now because I don't want to get in trouble. Scale X, uh, Z, rather. Go to the side here. Go into the wireframe. Pick everything up by a little bit. Scale Z, some more. Select these two faces. Inset them ever so slightly. And then cut a loop in here and bevel it something like that control link to select it all scale again 
go back into the um, solid the solid view and that's starting to look like what I need but I need to scale some more grab Z I'm gonna leave it right there on the side view I'm gonna put my cursor right there off the 3d cursor I keep pushing the the uh, orientation transform scale Z just to bring it down a little bit control R here and now select that face control plus shift plus control plus plus shift plus gets you out of the uh, ortho I was working in the ortho <clears throat> control plus and um, rather control minus I'm making it up as I go along here. I'm just thinking that this thing narrows down. Scale, Shift Z, narrows down something like Control Z. It's eccentric because it, I didn't do it off of the medium point. So Scale, Shift Z, like that. Maybe, maybe take that loop right there. Grab Z, bring it up, and. In the selection, take that face and then just scaling it down. So it doesn't bevel so so neatly here. Control safe. And it looks like it has bearings or something like that that it's gonna swing around. Now take that face and set it again and extrude it up. And control control bevel it. Two, take that and control B. Control R and take that face and set it just a tiny bit as well. So that is going to be what you know pivots this wheel here. Control save. Take that, tab out, take that and that. Rather take that and apply the solidify. So it's applied. So these are two separate meshes, I'm going to control join them. Um, then take that one and that one, control link materials already. Q uh, wireframe so I can see them and appreciate it. There. That kind of works. All right. It needs a plate down there where it's going to carry the cart. Control save. So let me go back into the solid view. What I'm going to do is shoot, choose that object right there. The wheels, they all have an object origin that's up here somewhere. What I'm going to do is, excuse me. <laughs> Not sure if my microphone is on or off. I got to write the time down. All right, it's, it's already an hour. I just noticed that, well, I'll take the time, it's already an hour. Uh, I have the tubing. Uh, the problem with these videos is if you have nothing to show for that's a complete uh, finished product, I could put it on online and say, check it out. But it's like, so what? You're not finished. And it's so hard just to get somebody to actually watch the videos all the way through, obviously when they're too long or obviously when they're too short. So. Maybe I'll take a new approach. I've already did this recording. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here. Well, no, hold on. Let me finish what I'm doing right here. Uh, rather stop it at an hour, and then continue with the actual cage, or the actual um, basket um, in another video. Um, because, like I said, it's just it's just. Uh, I mean, I know that the people that do watch they, they watch because they find value in what I'm doing. Snap cursor to select it, mm. but just to get it to show up and people to watch and doing the right thumbnail and all that, it's 
it's a it's an art that I don't know. <laughs> I don't know it. All right, what I did is I, I snapped the cursor to the middle of that wheel because what I'm going to do now is take that uh, thingamajig right there that holds the wheel and I'm going to make make the origin uh, the 3D cursor. All right. So now I'm going to duplicate it a couple times. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to take that wheel, deselect the wheel, link, snap the cursor to selected, tab out, take that one, snap, selection to cursor. Goes to that wheel, do the process here. Uh, control link, snap, cursor to selected, tab out, selection to cursor, do the same thing over here. <laughs> link, snap, Cursor to selected, tab out. All right, now I have the little covers on all, or wheel holders on all the wheels. And then control join. Now they're back over here. And if I wanted to have them all, to have the center back over here again, I just centered the cursor again, set origin, origin to three, the cursor, controls, control save. All right. Now before, before calling it for today, so I've done the copying there. Alt A, if I look at it in the material preview, it looks like it's a cart frame. So maybe I can just show and say cart, shopping cart frame, <laughs> how to model a shopping cart frame, which is not a very, I mean, there's skill involved in doing it the way I just showed, but it's not a feat that people are going to say, oh yeah, you did something that's accomplishment worthy. <laughs> okay, I'm going back to the shading just to finish so I can clickbait this. Um, <laughs> uh, on this one, I'm going to add a material. Uh, the first material is going to be just a black rubber type of thing. Um, subsurface, I'm going to put it as gray. I'm going to put the subsurface tiny bit up because I've never really worked with this it's meant to be used for it's meant there's options here to move that I never really move it's meant to be used for skin and so on because there's stuff that you see underneath the surface but uh, if you look at some of the old videos also sometimes if you don't get it right you get like a rubbery looking skin so I just learned that it gives you like a rubbery look so the roughness is up maybe bring the specular up as well and um, where's the color base color the base color didn't I just what did I do I did not know this doesn't this doesn't change that up right Well, now I'm confused. Well, see, I don't deal with that too much. So I'm going to just start with a new one and go uh, principal BSDF. Where is it? I'm going to go down. Particle info. Oh, shader. Principal BSDF. Here's a base color. The same settings, but I do not have. So here, let's see what happens. Isn't that weird? How did I lose that one? I don't know. I didn't even change the method that it does whatever it does right there. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what I did. Is there a hide bun button? Alt H? No. Yeah, I know that if you hide, you collapse it. Um, there's got to be another function. There's an, I know there's another function for collapsing stuff that you don't use. So I wonder if that one got collapsed, but I'm not going to dwell on it right now. Obviously, I don't know everything. And there's things that I just... I just go with what I know. I, I've said it before. Sometimes I think that it's hard to consider that maybe somebody knows everything in Blender. Or is like a guru. 
I mean, exception to the Blender Guru, right? He, he makes fluffy pillows and stuff, but um, that's a little too round right there. But so I would fix that by adding little bells around the edge when I feel like it. <laughs> Mission, okay, well. No, I have no idea why the other one would collapse. I'm still dwelling on it, even though. So, um, bring the roughness up. Right around there. And then I need to add another slot with another material, another new material. Let me go into the wireframe, five. What I'm going to do is do a, in the face selection, I'm not sure why I don't see the little dots for that one circle in the middle, other than maybe they get occluded because they're compounded one on top of another. I don't know why. All right. Back in here then. I'm going to go control plus, 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 plus. And here I just get to see which one I'm going to assign to it. Control plus until I see, there you go, minus plus. So I'm going to assign all these to the, the other material, which is the actual wheel itself. And that one looks a little bit more metallic in my reference images. So I'm just going to go ahead and assign them to this material here. Even though it's more metallic, it's not, it's not is not the same as the other one. So it looks that actually looks like plastic email. There's obviously artifacts there to be fixed. In the modeling, I mean. Which like I said, this is gonna be for visual clutter, this cart. So I think that's fine. Another thing to do is control save is um Put a bolt through all of these. Shift. No, I won't get it. So, in the wireframe, I'm going to deselect that one, that one, and that one, that one. Snap the cursor to the selected. That puts it right in the center. And tab out, shift add, mesh, a cylinder. There, that one's good, and then scale all the way down, we'll rotate X, rather Y, 90, enter, hit period just so that I'm not orbiting all over the place, scale, scale X, and then scale shift X. There it is. There's the bolt or the uh, the pin that holds them. Scale shift X, or rather scale X. Now this looks kind of small over here for this holder. But that's fine because most of the forces are going to go up kind of bugs me. I see this artifact kind of bugs me. I want to go and fix it, but like I said, I, I'm almost to the point where it's, it's already an hour and nine minutes of recording. And that's, I'm going to call it right now after doing this. So I'm going to choose this, the face there and there, and I'm going to extrude them. Scale X and then scale shift X, screen out, extrude them again, scale X, tiny bit, extrude them again, scale X, scale shift X, mm. scale X, bring it back down like that, extrude again, scale X, scale shift X. And I'm going to take that, 
right in the center. Same same deal that I did previously. I'm going to put that one in the same material and object as the one that has the holders. Control save. All right. Shift duplicate, shift duplicate, and duplicate again. Actually, I'm going to try to save some work here. Delete those. Take that one. Deselect everything. Link. Snap the cursor to that one. Take that one. Snap it to the cursor. Select this one. Control join. Add a modifier, a mirror modifier. Shift C. Uh, set origin to the 3D cursor. There we go. Apply the modifier. Control and then select that one. And control join. So now, that should have assigned the material to begin with. Now you got the little pins on there too. Okay, control save. What I don't have are the plates that go across here that hold in the support. Sorry about that. I just hit the microphone. I don't have the place to support the um, the wheels here. So tab in there, Alt A, and Control Link, Shift Add. A hey, added a plane. Control Z. Um, snap the cursor to select it. Shift Add a. I'm gonna put a cube. Tab out. Oh, I was in the wheels. Okay, P selection. Tab out. Take that one. Take that and control link materials. Okay, also get rid of that modifier. No, don't get rid of it just yet. Tab in there. Select everything. Scale X. I do have everything. Scale X. And it's not scaling. Why not? It only has this modifier. It only has that one modifier. And why is it behaving as if it has a mirror? I wonder. That's interesting. Oh, because I have this on. Beep. Grab. There it is. Scale X. Shift. Uh, or No, that's fine. Scale X. Scale Z. Grab Z. On the side there, in the orthographic view. Grab. Scale Y. And then scale X. Scale Z. A little bit more. Grab Z. To where it barely clips. And it looks like I need to move it all back because otherwise you'd have that corner there. So grab Y. So basically move it back to where it has support. Scale X. But at the same time, it does not have a corner that sticks out. I can fix that also by selecting this face. Scale X and then just scaling it, or rather control Z, let me lo control link everything, shift duplicate in the Y. I just duplicated that little bar that I needed there to begin with before I did what I was going to do, which is kind of destructive, scale X and just put it into the shape. Control link, scale 
Clicks. Control R. Put a couple of them in there. Select that edge. Shift G. Face angles. It's all the ones that I need. And bevel them just ever so slightly. Control R. One more there. It's going to round those corners out here in a minute. When I add the modifier back again, W. Rounded them too much. So over that, I'm just going to put a loop there. And eyeball it. Because it's on the underside, nobody sees, nobody cares. Now, if I could have done that here, <laughs> at the same time, huh? Scale X. Actually, I could. I could and I can. Because they have the same angle, I didn't pay attention to that. So, Alt A, Link, X, uh, Vertices, and then link, top view, shift, duplicate in the Y, down to about there, and then scale in the X to where it needs to be. It does, it's good. Tab out, control save on the side here, take these, and then just move them to where they feel, where you feel they have to be. There. Okay, good. On the side here, take these two again, go into the both objects in edit mode, and then select that and move them over to center them. Tab out. Control save. Now the bars that go across, they have some ridges for for strength. I'm not gonna worry about those, but uh, because the visual clutter of the cages are gonna change some of that. And then they also have nuts that go in here. Um, I'm not gonna worry about those as well. I'll add those later. So here's a portion of my shopping cart right now, all day. And I'm going to leave it like this. For now, I'm going to leave it like this. This is my shopping cart frame. Uh, the baskets are to come in the subsequent video. Be sure to watch it. <laughs> Otherwise, well, we'll see how many, how many views I get on this one because I only get like five six views, you know, whatever, then there's some that I have with five or whatever. This shopping carts are common, so common, I can't imagine anybody be like super excited about anything like this, but basically for me, it's, I just need it for visual clutter. So that's why I'm working on it. Control save. Um, okay. Well, thank you for watching. I'm going to leave it right there for this, um, for this particular, uh, session. Thank you for watching and goodbye.